George Dobey. We're doing a tribute to him. We got um, Danny Laporte here. Got to say some words. Maybe Chuck if he rode with him. And uh, Rita Gregory. An hour. Yeah, you can do it. Now. <laughs> you want to do the writer thing too? No, I don't want to do that. Where, where are you at, Rita? Come on, Rita Gregory from the original JT. <laughs> And uh, I want to thank Ed, Ed Tastian for bringing the bike, and Dan Geary for doing this uh, sweet setup on the, the mannequin, and, and Clint Hardick for the pants. <laughs> what do you got, Danny? Um, it's, uh, I just wanted to, I got a quick story, and uh, I'll, I'll never forget it. I had a great, probably two of the greatest years of my career ever racing against George. Um, we kind of went head to head for a couple years. We swapped championships, and um, but during the whole time, I got to say that he was one great rider. That you know, a lot of guys never really become friends. You know, you don't. You know, a lot of the ri racers today, it's always been that way. Guys, they just really don't get along. And at the end of the day, they won't hang out and just be buddies. So. George, I got to say, was that kind of guy. On the track, he was fierce, but afterwards, he, he was just awesome. He was a great guy. And, uh, sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> but uh, I got a story to tell. And uh, we were, and actually, this bike was there in Russia in 1982. And in 82 in Russia, it was kind of hard for Americans to get into Russia unless you had relatives or you're a diplomat or you did some kind of event like the Olympics or something like that. So I got a visa to race the Grand Prix. And um, George and I, we, we uh, the whole story, we're at the hotel. At the hotel at that time, they're called tourist hotels. Everyone that came in outside had to stay at a hotel that the government controlled. So, and that night before, they had this huge party, all the diplomats and military and all the states people came in. And, and there's probably six or seven hundred people, this giant hotel and party room. And, you know, it was just amazing. So... That earlier that day, I was in the parking lot, and I saw this soldier standing there looking at us, working on the bikes and mechanics, and, and I was looking at the guy, kept, he was, you know, standing kind of straight, he was looking forward, like, he was looking for something, he was, someone was going to bomb him or something, <laughs> and uh, I went up to him and I said, uh, he was kind of standing off the side, and I go, can I, can I buy, buy your belt? He had this really cool brass belt with a star and a sickle, you know, in the middle of it. And he looked at me, and he's shaking his head. He's like sweating. And so anyway, he pointed to his watch, and like at a certain time to be here, because he didn't speak a word of English. I didn't speak any Russian. So he comes back at that time. It's like 5:30. He brings a complete Russian uniform. And so I gave so I gave him a hundred dollars. <laughs> he was like the happiest guy in the world because he probably lives in Chicago now or something. <laughs> so <laughs> so anyway. He, he gives me this suit, and uh, a complete suit, and, and about a minute later, there's this giant explosion in the parking lot, and, and, like it was a giant bomb. Kurt, Heinz Kindergartner just lit an acetylene oxygen bomb under a truck, <laughs> and so, so all, the, all these military guys are running around, they, you know, some, they think somebody's fighting, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, to make a long story short. I've got this suit. I don't know what to do with it. And Joe, I was showing George. He goes, look at I got. And he's all, Danny, you got to wear that to the party tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all F you, you know. I'm going go to I'm gonna go to Siberia. And you're going to be, you know, for you, you're Belgian. They don't care about you, you know. So I go, he goes, give it to me. I'll wear it. I go, are you nuts? So anyway, he goes into my room. He puts on this complete Russian uniform, and he walks down the stairs, I'll never forget this, and there's hundreds of people, military, everybody, and he marches in like, oh, I can't believe this. So all, the, all these guys ran over to him, because they knew, because everyone was laughing, and they're, they're joking, so they run over to him, they start taking the clothes off him, and where did you get this? And, and George just goes, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, George. <laughs> he, totally, he totally burned me. So this is the night before the race. And uh, so anyway, um, the guy that took it, the head guy in the military that was there, I sat down. He asked me, how'd you get it? Where's, where's the guy? And this and that. And I felt really bad because inside the leather belt there was a, a name. And so I figured it was his. And uh, 
So anyway, I said, what am I going to do the night before? So the guy offered me some vodka and we started drinking. The night before a grandparent was drinking, I'd never drink. And I'm drinking vodka, doing shots with this guy. And so I was kind of schmoozing him a little bit, you know. And then at the end of the night, he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, I want to give you something. So he took the suit and everything was gone. I went to my hotel room. He, I gave him some shirts, some t-shirts, some JT stuff. <laughs> and he gave me back everything but, everything but the hat. So it was really cool. Anyway, we did some trading and it was really cool. But it was a great story. And uh, the next day, George and I, for 45 minutes, we never left each other's side for two 45 minute motos. I saw yellow the whole time. <laughs> and probably the best racing I'd ever did. So Yay. that's my memory of it. I think it's just really great that Scott's doing this for George because George is, was one of the unsung heroes and one of the JT riders that I didn't know really as well as Marty and Danny and Chuck and Scott and all the other you guys that are here today. But there's a couple of things I do remember specifically about George that always stuck with me and it was one of the stories is that when he first came to JT to be sponsored, um, he had he had begged and begged and begged to ride for us, and, and we had him down. He was here in the USA. He came down to the factory, and John Gregory negotiated with him, and finally they signed a contract. And I'll never forget, after that, George came into my office, and he had this big smile on his face and this twinkle in his eye, and he looked at me and he said, Rita, I am a JT rider. This year, I will be champion. And he, and he, he had that great confidence in us, which I appreciated. But more importantly, he knew that he was going to be champion. And a little later on, um, George got a big contract from a company by the name of Emro Bear in Europe, and he left JT. And we kind of lost touch with him for a long time. But about six months before George passed away, I reconnected with him. And he was so happy to reconnect. And he, he said, Rita, he said, I love my JT as much today as I did the very first day. And by the way, I was in love with your daughter. I never <laughs> told her, but I was in love with your daughter. <laughs> So, you should have told her. <laughs> but anyway, he was he was one of the great guys, and one of his disappointments was when the new JT uh, reorganized. They got all these riders together, Danny and Chuck and some of the others, and they forgot about George. But George was a great world champion, and he did that in JT clothing. And I have to say that the reason we made our products the way we did was we had the greatest riders in the world and they always would let us know when something wasn't working or something needed to be changed or something needed to be innovated and that we made for these guys and you guys got the benefit because whatever they rode with we pulled right off the shelf for you so I hope you enjoyed it and I, I just thank you so much for supporting us all those years Thanks, Rita. Chuck, sign everybody. <laughs> now, Berner and a group of us were able to go to Farley Castle a couple years ago, which was really a, a, a track that all the GP riders look forward to. Graham Noyce won his championship there. So two years ago, um, George has, was having some medical problems. We heard he was in the hospital. Next thing you know, he shows up. And for opening ceremonies, they like to have the riders take a lap around the track without their helmets. And uh, we're thinking, um, well, he's just going to hang out. Nope, nope. He fires up a bike and goes out there in probably his last lap that he did. But it, it's really a testament to how tough motocrossers are, in particular Joe Bay. And it was a real pleasure to see him do that, do that lap. And, and kind of a tribute, that night in the beer tent, he got up and, and did a big, big uh, 
speech about what he thinks of the condition of FIM GP racing and not supporting the riders. So, you know, in tribute to him, I want to just carry that message on. And uh, it was uh, something he was really passionate about, standing up for the riders' rights and abilities to get paid. But uh, here's to uh, Joe Bay. George Jobet was a Belgian born in 1961 whose professional motocross career spanned from 1979 to 1992. His achievements include two FIM World 250cc championships in 1980 and 83, and three 500cc championships in 1987, 91, and 92, as well as several Belgian national motocross championships an Italian 500cc national championship, and George was on the winning Belgian team in the 1980 motocross donations. George's fame skyrocketed in 1984 during the British 500cc motocross Grand Prix at Hawkstone Park when he passed over the head of rival Andre Mallerby by clearing the double jump, well before doubles were customary in motocross. In 2007, Jobay was paralyzed after a crash while training some young racers. Over the next four years, he regained his ability to walk and ride his bicycle. However, leukemia took his life in 2012 at the age of 51. Incredible talent of past motocross champions remains a joy to watch today. As of the date of this video, October 2013, several videos of George's racing can be found on YouTube by searching Motocross GP George or George's with an S, Joe Bay. The phrase, fight the good fight, comes from the Bible, where God's word says, fight the good fight of faith, take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. We were all made to love God and be loved by Him. Turn your faith toward Him. Love God with all your heart through Jesus Christ. And when we lose our final battle, we'll go on to victory in Christ our champion.